Hey guys, before we get started with today's video, I wanted to give a quick word to the channel's first ever sponsor. It's a highly popular mobile game. The name you all know. It ends with a Legends. Please welcome our new sponsor, Monster Legends. Monster Legends is a free-to-play mobile game for iOS and Android, where you can collect and raise hundreds of different kinds of monsters, including some based off of some of your favorite YouTubers. Have you ever wanted to own Dream, keep him in a special little cage in your house, and force-feed him thousands upon thousands of raw tomatoes? I've seen some of the fan art you Dream fans have posted out there, I know some of you want to do this. You can also take two monsters, put them in the Pokemon daycare, and breed them to get entirely new ones. Have you ever wanted to breed, Dream? I know you have, you freaks! You can raise your monsters up by feeding them thousands of raw tomatoes, and then take them into battle. You have to eat all the tomatoes, Pepe, or you won't grow up big and strong! There's different PvP modes like special dungeons and an adventure map. Or hey, you can get your friends together, who have hopefully also downloaded the game through the link in the description, and battle your monsters together in real-time PvP fights. But let's be real, do any of them really stand a chance when you use Big Monkey? And you can check back for new events every week to keep the fun rolling. Forever. And ever. Download the game right now through the link in the description and you'll get 50,000 food, 300,000 gold, and an epic monster, Kauri, all totally free. Just for trying the game out through the link. I bet the spy mage will like this one. So go out there and download Monster Legends and tell them Fish sent you. Now back to the video. Your Majesty, where the hell is Soldier Tiff to f gong? What did you say, gong? Are you telling me there is no Soldier Tiff to f Yes! Oh! Welcome to Bad Weapon Academy, where we take a look at the worst weapons TF2 has to offer, and I'll show you how to best utilize them. Today, I must confess a bias. Without question, my two favorite weapons for Pyro are the Flare Gun and the Detonator. Two guns with similar designs, yet such drastically different play styles. The Flare Gun rewards you for precision aiming and for following up on a previous attack, while the Detonator specializes in flanking utility and crowd control thanks to precision timing. However, the next two attempts at Flare Guns went a bit tits up. The Scorch Shot is... <laughs> And the Man Melter is very underwhelming, and as such is the topic of today's episode. Let's do the old stats thing, because I wouldn't blame you for forgetting that this thing even exists, much less its actual stats. Compared to the other flare guns, the Man Melter has a 50% increase in projectile speed. This sounds good on paper, but when you consider the fact that, at base, the other flare gun projectiles are faster than the direct hit, you realize it's kind of like strapping a rocket to a Formula One racing car. <laughs> if anything, this has a chance of messing with your muscle memory and could cause you to overshoot your targets. It is technically a bonus, but not in the way it is for something like the lock and load, where that has a lot of benefits. At best, you'll hit someone who's about to move around a corner that you wouldn't have gotten otherwise. It does the same damage as the flare gun, so 30 damage plus afterburn or 90 damage plus afterburn on a critical hit. However, it doesn't deal critical hits to burning targets. In fact, it's the only flare gun without any kind of bonus to burning targets. Now, if you're the kind of person who only hits the initial long range hit and fucks up the follow up 9 times out of 10, this won't be such a big deal to you. You'd obviously be better off using the Scorch Shot because of the sheer amount of benefits the same action would offer you, but that goes for any situation. If you can hit that follow-up though, then this is gonna suck a lot. Where this really blows is in close range fights, since you can no longer effectively flare punch people, which is both fun and effective. You can still try, it's just going to be terrible. The Man Melter also has no ammo pool, meaning you can shoot it forever like the other laser weapons. This isn't that big of a deal. It's a situation kind of similar to the Pompson. Unless your tactics begin and end with running at the enemy screaming, 
you're going to want to stick around your teammates, in particular your engineers and their dispensers. And in general, if you're anything like me and throw out your air blasts all over the place, you're going to be heading to ammo packs and dispensers often regardless. An ammo pool is really only relevant in terms of flare gun balance if you're standing in one spot just spamming a flare across the map. Which you can do with this, but there's no real reason to, especially with no reward on follow-up hits and a middling base damage. Really, this is the case with almost all the laser weapons except the cow mangler since soldiers can actually run out of rockets. Anyways, the final stat that actually matters is that you can use the right click button to create a suction vacuum that works like an air blast to extinguish your teammates. For each teammate extinguished, you get one guaranteed critical hit. It does not function as an air blast in regards to projectiles, which is good since unlike air blast, you can just hold this down to constantly extinguish teammates. It does take a short amount of time to get going though, unlike air blast which is effectively instant, and the sound and visual effects make me wonder if the mechanic is even working properly. This is not the suck cannon from Ratchet and Clank. And while they're not stats, it's important to mention the bugs that come with this weapon. The vacuum effect is already hard to see as it stands, but sometimes it just straight up doesn't show up at all which is incredibly irritating. Speaking of hard to see, sometimes when you shoot a stored crit, it creates this giant blinding puff of fire right in your face. The same puff of fire that appears when you extinguish a teammate. Fucking sore spaghetti. Speaking of speaking of hard to see, while it's not a bug, it can be annoyingly difficult to tell when this thing is good to shoot again, an issue the other flare guns don't have. The only thing you get is this tiny little beeping sound that's easy to get lost in all the explosions, screaming, voice lines, and gunfire, and a little spark that's easy to get lost in all the visual effects the game offers. Okay, what's all this add up to? Well, despite its list of upsides that seem appealing on the surface, Without question, the biggest, and potentially only draw of this weapon, is the stored crits in exchange for extinguishes. All the other stats are basically just filler that don't mean anything. This is a mechanic that is both good and bad, because it puts whether or not you'll get a crit completely in your control, and it also doesn't. See, being able to store flare crits is kinda neat. If you get a bunch of them, you can do insane long range burst damage without needing to hit someone the first time. But the problem is, it requires the enemy to have a pyro. If they don't have a pyro, or if the pyro they do have is doing particularly poorly, you just have the equivalent of a flare gun that can't crit on burning players. Now here's the thing, this is still useful to a degree. Being able to light people on fire from a distance is great for pyro and that can't be understated. However, when you have other options like the flare gun which has more consistent burst damage, the detonator which assists you in flanking and gives you crowd control options, or that other one, then in a situation without pyros or the occasional heater heavy or cow mangler soldier, there just isn't a reason to use it over these other options. The point is that this is a support weapon with one very specific utility that your primary is already well equipped to deal with. Well, if someone does pick pyro, it might not be a bad idea to switch to it. One of the biggest weaknesses of the other flare guns, even the Scorch Shot, is their weakness against other pyros. Trying to kill a pyro with a flare gun sucks. It's like trying to poke a hole in a tire with a paperclip. But at ranges, that might be your only option to even try and damage him. Either that or you close the distance and get into a derpy ass pyro flamethrower fight because those are always fun. Well, if you have crits stored up, then this becomes a long range shotgun against pyros and anyone else it hits for that matter. It'll even put a dent in danger shield snipers which the other flare guns couldn't hope to achieve. When you're against other pyros, the best situations to pull this out and start vacuuming are twofold. First is when the enemy pyro is just running at your team like a dipshit. Depending on how long he's able to keep the flamethrower on your teammate before dying, if you just hold down the right click while he does this, you can build up quite a few crits. Obviously, if you see anyone on fire at all, then extinguish them. Just don't forget to use your man melter and not your flamethrower on accident. Fuck! The second situation is one that makes me very happy. When the enemy pyro is using the scort shot. Yeah, that brainless motherfucker standing on the other side of the map, spamming the hell out of a choke point, is now feeding you free crits at no cost to yourself. Thanks, brainless motherfucker. The strengths of the Scorch Shot, being its ease of lighting someone on fire and its wide area of effect to do this to multiple people, now become your strength as you give the big suck to your team, 
getting rid of their afterburn and turning you into a fire sniper. Now, you do run the risk of falling into what I call Frontier Justice Syndrome, where you build up a fuckload of crits, but then die not having used very many of them. Oh no, that's not fair! That's not fair! Or you get all jittery and panicky because you're like, oh my god, I finally got one, and then you completely beef your shot. So be mindful of that. Now, let's talk about the weapons you should pair it with. I'll start off with the melee since that's going to be quickest. Go with either the Power Jack, Homewrecker, or the Extinguisher. The healing bonus you get from the Back Scratcher isn't too relevant since you're going to be getting a lot of healing from extinguishing your teammates anyway, and its utility as a combo tool with a Crit Flare is outmatched by the Extinguisher by a long shot. Basically, go Homewrecker if you're a Pie Bro, go Power Jack if you're normal, and if you want to combo the shit out of people, go for the Extinguisher. The Extinguisher here is my favorite option because the sheer amount of damage you can do with a crit man melter shot followed by an Extinguisher hit is incredible. This is the melee option where I think the synergy with the man melter is highest, but the other options have more practical applications outside of use with the man melter. Now let's talk about primaries. If you ask me, I think you should ignore the stock flamethrower and degreaser when using the man melter. They do a fine job at extinguishing people on their own, and with the degreaser, you can even pull off flare combos on pyros if you're good enough with flame manipulation. I know you can do this with stock and the flog too, but it's much easier with the degreaser. Speaking of the flog, this is the obvious pick to pair with the man melter. The flog's lack of air blast means the man melter is a great pick if you still want to put out burning teammates, and the guaranteed crit flares are a great way to easily fill up your flog charge. These two weapons are in the same set for a reason, unlike the third degree which is just kind of there. They're meant to complement each other, and they do a good job of it. At the end of the day though, you're still a flog pyro, and all the strengths and weaknesses of that come into play. You still do shit against explosive classes, and because you don't have the free fire damage of the scorch shot, you do have to actually try if you want to melt half the team in 5 seconds. On the other end of the spectrum is the back burner. I'd argue this is the weakest flamethrower that's viable to use alongside the man melter. It covers your weakness in not being able to support your team through extinguishing, but that's the only benefit it provides. It's not a bad choice, but if you made me pick between the man melter and detonator when I run the back burner, I'm going with the detonator every time. The flanks are just too good. The third option, and my personal favorite, is to run it with the dragon's fury. This combo works so well together, it's actually kind of awesome. See, the Dragon's Fury's air blast issue is different from the backburner's. The backburner air blasts just the same as the flamethrower and degreaser, it just can't do it as often because it runs out so quickly. The Dragon's Fury has a painfully slow air blast recharge that can make extinguishing teammates feel like a liability if you're in a firefight. So even though it has far more air blast charges than the backburner, it still feels like you want to use air blast only when necessary. The man melter makes this process a lot easier, leaving you free to save your air blast for projectiles while still keeping your team extinguished. And when you combo a stored crit flare with a direct from this thing, the damage is insane. And of course being a flare gun, the man melter inflicts the maximum afterburn duration, giving you a lot more room for error if you have trouble hitting the dragon's fury shots. It's actually a really cool combo that's pretty fun to play around with. Also, the loss of crits on burning targets isn't so bad with this set since the Dragon's Fury has such a short afterburn time to begin with, meaning it covers weaknesses of both weapons and enhances both of their strengths. I think it's way more fun than comboing it with the Flog if you ask me. If you're a Pyro player and want to try out something a bit different, then give this a shot and see if you have fun with it. Now, the unfortunate truth here is that in the majority of situations, you'll still probably be better off using almost any other secondary. Except the Gas Passer, that one's still worse and not even by a little bit. So, what can be done for the Man Melter? Well, we've got another blank canvas case here. There's only one real stat that actually matters, so the sky's the limit for how we can buff it. In Zesty's video on the Man Melter, he focused on its support role and suggested the Big Suck become an all-purpose debuff remover as opposed to just Afterburn. That's definitely a good idea, and probably the most straightforward and practical way you can buff it while keeping the original design in mind. A thought I had though was a bit more out there. What if the vacuum worked on projectiles? You could hold down the button as usual and catch a projectile straight out of the air. 
This would hold the projectile in front of you for a couple seconds as the man melter discombobulates its molecules before finally sucking it up and converting it into a crit. You wouldn't be able to fire or use the vacuum while doing this, and attempting to switch weapons while doing so would simply respawn the projectile right in front of you, so you can't just spam it and delete projectiles from existence. You have to commit. This gives it a lot more practical utility since so many classes have projectiles and makes it so you can get guaranteed crits much more often without having to rely on the other team having a pyro. It also functions similar to an air blast while keeping you more in control of it but while also taking longer. This sounds pretty complicated and given how the man melter is already suffering from some pretty major source spaghetti, I'm not sure if this could be implemented. Also, the source spaghetti needs to be fixed, it needs a better reload indication, and let me festivize it. And yeah, that's the Man Melter. It's unfortunately one of the game's more forgettable weapons. Look, even the Weta Workshop forgot about it. Limited edition only. They'd rather sell the Righteous Bison than keep selling this thing. God, I wish I had one of these. I hope this can sit alongside the other not-evil flare guns as a fun and effective tool in Pyro's arsenal. But until then, go out there and give your team the big suck, and tell them Fish sent ya. Also, don't forget to download Monster Legends through the link in the description. Okay, video's over for real now. Bye.